If you clicked on this video, chances are that you've been having difficult times to beat the Sicilian defense or that you find it so hard to play against the Sicilian defense. For example, the open Sicilian defense alone is divided into four major variations based on Black's response. Although there are many other less uh, played options to be explored. Uh, so we're talking of the Nagio variation, the Dragon variation. You also uh, have to know the classical variation, the Shevningen variation. There are also other variations uh, such as the Accelerated Dragon, Kalashnikov variation, Taimano variation, Khan Sicilian, Four Knights variation, Pin variation, Moscow variation, Rosolimo attack, O'Kelly variation. They're just uh, so overwhelming and uh, so confusing. But how about if I tell you that we can shut down all of Black's dreams by forcing him to play on our terms, not what he wants? So after you play pawn to e4 and black responds with pawn to c5, instead of going knight to f3, which is the common move here, I recommend that you play pawn to c4, which is uh, known as the Stanton or Cochrane variation or Stanton Cochrane variation, whatever you can call it. Now, I have tried this system myself, guys, and it has worked uh, perfectly. I tried this against strong players, uh, including title players like... Uh, FMs and candidate masters and it worked for me so I bet it can also work for you guys so believe it or not uh, this one system takes all the Sicilian players out of theory and most of the times this system transposes back into the English Potvinic which black players are not prepared for so after c4 black may respond with knight to c6 and here there are uh, two moves uh, that you can choose as white you can either play knight g to e2 or you can play right away pawn to g3 and i'm going to explain why so going back a few moves i would like to mention that our main battle is on the center right here just uh, these uh, three squares right here so whatever black would do we'll just make sure that our center is safe and uh, black cannot do any funny tactics on the center so that's where we are going to keep an eye on so c4 knight to c6 by black here i recommend that you play knight to e2 stopping black's knight uh, from coming to the d4 square so here you are going to see black playing knight to f6 so here he's just attacking our pawn on e5 so what can we do here knight bc3 protects our pawn and most of the times you are going to see black responding with a move pawn to e6 so the idea is that black wants to push his d pawn to the d5 square and at all costs we should not allow our pawn to d5 to happen that's why we should play knight to f4 just keeping an eye on the d5 square i mean so again you can see how we are controlling these uh, three squares with our pieces black cannot play d5 because at the end of the day it is us who are going to be a pawn up because uh, we are protecting the d5 square with uh, how many pieces so far one two three four four pieces at the same time so uh, black cannot play pawn to d5 and here i would like to mention something black cannot do anything to make our knight go back if black plays g5 we are going to go knight to h5 attacking his knight on f6 if black plays uh, pawn to e5 that is not much of a stretch again because we can go knight to d5 sitting on that beautiful outpost bishop d6 by black would be like the most useless move of all times as we are going to play pawn to d3 indirectly protecting our knight with our bishop same with queen to c7 it doesn't make sense because we are just going to push our pawn to d3 indirectly protecting our knight with our bishop on c1 for example if black becomes stubborn and plays pawn to d5 anyways we are going to capture that pawn with our c pawn and if let's say e takes on d5 we are going to capture back with our knight which was sitting on f4 and here please note that black's knight cannot capture on e4 because we are going to pin the knight with our queen uh, to e2 
and that's why the most sensible move for black to play here is knight takes on d5 after which we are going to play knight takes on d5 as well and if let's say bishop e6 attacking our knight here we are going to put our bishop on c4 uh just protecting our knight twice with our pawn as well so here black may be tempted to play knight to a5 uh attacking our bishop on c4 here the job is very simple we just push pawn to d3 protecting our bishop we do not mind to trade that bishop because black's knight on a5 is very active than our bishop and we still have our outpost knight and uh, we are aiming to arrange our pawns in this manner so if black takes we are going to take with our pawn and then if a bishop takes our knight we are going to take with our c pawn and then we will have uh, two center pawns so clearly you can see that pawn to d5 fails due to this outcome and again instead of pawn to g5 black may also try to play pawn to a6 which is an engine move now this doesn't worry us let me just explain something here that you should always keep in mind whenever you see this pawn to a6 it's high time for you to play a4 because of uh, the highlighted arrows uh, what black is planning to do here is that by playing pawn to a6 is preparing to put his a8 rook on b8 and then push the b5 pawn so that's why in this position where, whenever you see pawn to a6 it's high time you play pawn to a4 just locking the queen side so here you are we are just simply stopping all the movements from the queen side here you may see black responding with a move pawn to g6 and trying to fiancaro his bishop on g7 so here you should as well continue with the main plan pawn to g3 also trying to fiancaro your bishop on g2 bishop g7 bishop g2 castle shot by black castle shot by white pawn to d6 and um, I can tell you in this position, I don't even know the best continuation that uh, black can take here. Look at how protected our center is. Black, it's like black cannot do anything. This bishop on g2 is indirectly keeping an eye on the d5 square. Our pawn on c4 is also protecting this square. Our pawn on e4 is also protecting the d5 square. So it's hardly easy for black to do anything in this position. And that's why you are going to see them making these uh, short moves that are meaningless. And here, I recommend that after pawn to d6 push the pawn to d3 you know this is our primary goal in this system we want to have these triple pawns here the pawn on c4 the pawn on d3 and the pawn on e4 so later on you are also going to see us pushing the pawn to f4 now don't worry about our knight on f4 it saved its purpose already uh, since we have our bishop on g2 we are going to bring back our knight to the e2 square so that wasn't the final destination for our knight now here the other question that you may have is where are we going to put our bishop which is on c1 you're going to see in a few moments so queen c7 may be played by black Pawn to h3 is very important as it prevents black from playing knight to g4 maybe in the future or bishop to g4 in the near future. You are also creating a room for your king because at some point this king on g1 will go to the h2 square in order to be safe. So after pawn to h3, black may respond with pawn to b6. As you can see, it's hardly easy for him to make sensible moves here. That's why you see oftentimes black making these short moves because he doesn't know the right continuation. So bishop e3, the final destination for our dark squared bishop will either be f2 after our pawn goes to f4 or h6 to pin black's bishop on g7 to the rook on f8 supported by our queen which will soon go to d2 so black here may play bishop b7 and i would like to mention something here in most cases when you see black's bishop going to g7 you should always be considering rook a to b1 in this position since we already have our knight on c3 uh we don't really need to worry about our pawn on b2 unless a black doesn't have a knight on f6 that's when we should be considering to play rook b1 so another point to be taken seriously bishop g7 equals rook a b1 so we bring back our knight to the e2 square rook a d8 may be played by black f4 so again you've seen our plan 
So always remember that F4 pawn push is our main plan in the middle game. If, if at all you don't know what to do in the middle game, just think of how you can develop the F2 pawn to the F4 square so that you can push it forward or maybe you can capture the pawn on E5. At this point, black may be tired and think Point to d5 now makes sense with an intention of forking our knight and our bishop. But we're going to take this pawn and then if e takes d5, we just go pawn to e5 attacking black's knight on f6. And here black may try to do something, uh, you know, stupid like... Uh, Mm, let's say pawn to d4 forking our knight and our bishop we do not worry much about this move because we are going to take that knight and intending to take the bishop and also the rook so let's say if black takes pawn on f6 we go knight e4 after d takes on e3 knight takes on f6 check king g7 knight d5 forking the queen and the pawn there is no way black can protect his pawn on e3 so black would have to go queen d6 and then after we take the pawn on e3 with our knight we are better in this position and a black cannot do anything and we're just going to play next move knight to c4 attacking the queen so you can see that there's no much memorization in this system the whole idea is just to protect our center making sure that black does not penetrate and we are good to go and believe it or not when you play like this any titled player will find it very difficult to crack your center because um, what uh, masters like doing is just to destroy your center and take advantage of the fact that uh, they are better than you in terms of tactics so just like i mentioned in the introduction of this video there are two ways of playing this system you can still go pawn to g3 intending to fianchero your bishop on g2 this knight will go to the e2 square and then you push your pawn to the f4 square therefore to be more clear let me show you our main plan and here i'll just be making some uh, random useless moves from black's side so our universal system goes like this pawn to e4 pawn to c4 and then pawn to d3 so first of all we want to strengthen our center and make sure that we have these triple pawns on the center so we want to have the c pawn the d pawn and the e pawn just like this and the next phase goes like this knight this knight on b1 goes to c3 and then this knight on g1 goes to e2 so you can see the knights are supposed to be arranged in this way so this should be your primary goal on the center and what are you supposed to do on the queen side if a6 by black for example remember what i said black wants to put his rook on b8 and push the b5 pawn so whenever you see s6 it's high time you play pawn to a4 so the idea is just to lock the queen side completely and after locking the queen side, you now shift your attention to the king side. So what are you going to do on the king side? What you are going to do is as follows. You are going to fianchero your bishop on g2 so that you can castle short. And again, remember what I said in this position. Whenever you see black's bishop going to g7, it's high time you consider the move rook a to b1 so that you protect the b2 pawn indirectly. Because this bishop on uh, g7 eyes our b2 pawn indirectly so we need to be very careful if you can play rook b1 play it as soon as possible whenever you see bishop to g7 and let's say maybe after pawn to d6 again pawn to d6 opens the way for the bishop to come to the g4 square so whenever you see moves such as this play h3 h3 stops black from playing knight to g4 in the future or bishop to g4 so uh, the idea is very simple if knight to f6 for example we again play bishop to e3 just like i said earlier on the final destination for this bishop which goes to e3 is f2 or h6 provided that our queen is already on d2 so let's say bishop d7 by black just a random move here we play b3 just completing our queen side and whenever you see this battery here queen c8 and uh, the bishop on d7 it's high time you put your king on h2 and our system is complete believe it or not this is our simple setup so in the middle game our plan is very simple we are planning to go pawn to f4 and either push it to f5 or take the pawn which will be on e5 possibly 
so that we can open the F file. But in most cases, I recommend that you just continue pushing this pawn up to the F5 square so that you can just uh, disturb Black's king side by capturing on G6. Okay, so to make it simple for you guys, these are the seven steps that you should follow in order for this system to be successful. So the first thing that you want to do is to control or lock the center. And by the center, I mean the C pawn, D pawn, and the E pawn supported by your knight on e2 and the knight on c3 step number two you need to lock the queen side if you can as soon as possible for example remember i said black's early bishop to g7 equals rook a to b1 in order to indirectly defend the b2 square and step number three is high time now you secure your king side by fiancatering your bishop on g2 then castle short and then you play moves such as pawn to h3 and king to h2 the opening stage is over in the middle game stage again you only need to consider three things begin attacking from the king side for example starting with a pawn to f4 intending to break through the center or you know advancing the f4 pawn to f5 and then keep the game going from there step number five in the middle game you need to hold the center with your knights so here is where you need to look out for outposts and in this case most of the times you're going to be putting your knight onto the d5 square that would be a great outpost for your knight provided that black's e pawn is already on e5 and the c pawn is already on c5 so if you don't know what to do in the middle game just start with the f pawn and start looking out for outposts where your knight can sit the places where your knight cannot be attacked by black's pawns step number six after you finish everything to do with the center as well as your king side it's high time you shift your attention to the queen side so you now shift your attack to the queen side and start looking out for moves such as b4 b5 a takes on b5 etc etc step number seven in the end game stage now you start looking out for a better pawn endgame. The purpose of this system is to remain with a better pawn structure so that in the endgame you can have an upper hand in terms of attacking. And those are the only seven steps that you need to consider when playing this system. This is a very simple system and in my next video, I'm going to show you how I play this system against any rated chess player. I'm not saying that you're going to be winning all your games with this system. But what I'm saying is that you are going to be having good positions and black is not going to be outplaying you with lots of tactics that you cannot understand because the ball is in your hands with this system. Okay, in order to give you more confidence in this opening, let's look at some of the over the board chess games that were played by super grandmasters. In this case, I'm looking at uh, the game between Paris L at 2732 versus Vichy Anand at 2803 by then. And this was in 2016. Paris started with pawn to e4 and then Vichy Anand responded with pawn to c5, the Sicilian defense. Perez, knowing he was playing against a very strong chess player, decided to play pawn to c4, the Stanton Cochrane variation. Vichy played knight to c6, knight c3 was played by Perez, g6 by Anand, g3 by Perez, bishop to g7, bishop to g2. Again, you can see this uh, structure appearing. And this is the system that I recommended you guys to be playing. Knight to f6 by Anand, knight g to e2. So you see again this knight going to the e2 square instead of the f3 square. So black castles short, Perez completes his pawn chain on the center. Again, remember what we said on the center. What Perez has done here is to lock the center completely with his triple pawns that we spoke about. After pawn to d6 by Anand, Perez castled short, pawn to a6 was played by Anand. Now in this position, I recommended that whenever you see pawn to a6, you should play pawn to a4 to lock the queen side completely. But Perez here noticed that Anand had already put his bishop onto the g7 square, indirectly eyeballing the b2 pawn. And that's why Perez here, out of guilt, he decided to go rook b1. Anyways, black cannot do anything here. He cannot push the b5 pawn, but just to be safe, I recommend that you go pawn to a4 whenever you see pawn to a6. Rook b8 was played by Anand. 
And again, here you see Perez going pawn to f4, just like I mentioned, to lock the queen side completely. Knight e8 was played by Anant, intending to go f5 later on. Bishop e3 was played by Perez. What did I say? That would be the destination for our dark squared bishop. So, in this position, since Perez delayed to play the move pawn to h3, Anant took advantage of that and played bishop to g4, pinning the knight on e2 to the queen on d1. And that's why Perez was forced to play pawn to f3, I guess which he did not intend to play. Bishop d7 was played by an end, a wasted move. Now you've seen this opening clearly, and now we are entering the middle game, which has uh, nothing to do with the system that I showed you, but uh, the game was drawn in this position, as there was a threefold repetition by white. So you can see how Perez, a lower rated player, managed to hold an end with this system. And that's why I like this system, because there's not much a theory to remember. It's something that you can play against a strong players, and they won't have many tactics to play with. After this game, I actually discovered that uh, Perez uh, uses this system quite often against strong players. He also used it against MVL, and the game ended into a draw. So you see a lower rated grandmaster here uh, using this system in order to hold the stronger super grandmasters. In the next game against another super GM by the name of uh, Walter Zek, something like that, Perez went on to win with this same system. And so if you want to find these games, I've linked them in the description down below where you can explore the remaining moves. Okay, and that was just about the Staunton system that you can use against any Sicilian player. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing and hit the like button and don't forget to leave your comments down below in the comment section in order to keep my channel active see you in the next video where i'm going to show you how to play this system properly by you know testing it against some random chess players on leeches thank you